Hi there, this is James Tripp and welcome to this video, which is the second video in the series sharing some ideas, some concepts from the forthcoming Freestyle Mindshifters Toolkit online training program. Now, I already mentioned the first one. I'm not going to go big into it now. The Freestyle Mindshifters Toolkit is all about being able to do effective change work in real time without scripts, without relying upon processes, relying upon a real deep understanding of human beings, how they work, how they show up, and how they engage with the world in effective and less effective ways, because this is the thing we need to know about, how people learn, grow, and change, and how that ties in with a collection of precision tools that you can use in real time, in the moment, to nudge the system of the person that you're working with to assist them in making profound and significant changes in their lives. So this is what the Freestyle Mind Shifters Toolkit is all about. Beyond scripts, beyond processes, real change in real time, backed by real deep understanding and effective tools. So I want to share what I am calling the Mind Shifters Map. The Mind Shifters Map. It's a very, very simple map. It's, uh, it's like a kind of mind map, if you like. It just goes shows five directions that we can go in when we're working with somebody. With uh, now, now, this map, I want to make this clear. Right? I shared with you the trance and transcendence model before, which is a key idea, and I will be unpacking a lot more deeply so that you can actually use that model as a, uh, as a thing in and of itself. Um, the trans transcendence model underpins everything, but this map is the map that's going to enable you to sit down with a client or with a, another human being. This might not be something you're doing professionally and know your choices as to where you go, where you can go. Um, it's also going to be the map that organizes all the specific tools that we share because there are specific tools that are being shared and we want them organized in a way. We don't want just some kind of random pile of tools that we go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing with this. The tools are organized in a particular way and they're organized around this, which is what I'm calling the mind shifters map. So if we look at the mind shifters map, there are essentially five directions that we can go in, five directions that we can go in, in the work that we're doing. So, I'll just give you the five directions straight off the bat. The first one is, and these are no specific order. There isn't an order here. I'm just giving them in the order that they come to my mind. So the first one is exploring what is. This is exploring what is in terms of current existing trances. Now, if you're doing change work with people, transformative work, when we're exploring what is, what is is usually the thing that they want to change. So it's going to be some kind of toxic trance, some kind of set of uh, reactions, behavioral reactions, uh, experiential reactions that somebody has in a particular context that they feel is not supporting them in how they really want to be in the world and what they want to create in their life. So exploring what is, is the first point on the map. And we have a whole bunch of tools for exploring what is, taking people deeper into the structure. Now this is an important thing. Because I mentioned in the first video the concept of the generative faculty. Now, if you like, you can think of the generative faculty as a deep intelligence that resides within people that has a drive towards creating better and more adaptive responses in life. Okay? Because nobody wants to hobble themselves or thwart themselves or create problems for themselves on purpose. Okay, we're all trying to do the best that we can. The trances we've built, whether they're serving us greatly or whether they're undermining us, were built um, from the perspective of doing the best that we can in any given moment. It was the best solution in the moment that the, or the moments that the trance was created going back in the history. It was our best solution. So we want to go back into that and we want to re-explore it whilst bringing the uh, generative faculty to bear. Because when the generative faculty, faculty is brought to bear, we are exploring, looking deeper, things start changing. So this is point one, explore what is. If you do nothing but this, if you do nothing but this, with a person's generative faculty switched on, you will get shifts happening. Okay, and this is just the first point on the map. And so as you, you know, we're doing this as a quick video now, we're not going into the specific tools. There are tools for doing this. So that's point one, explore what is. 
Point two is disrupt what is. So this is a slightly more, I'm gonna use the term aggressive, I don't know if that's a, an appropriate term or not, uh, approach to going into the current existing trances that we want to start to um, unhook, so to speak. So exploring what is is a little bit more gentle. Disrupting what is, is going in and overtly messing with it. You know, using pattern interrupts, confusion, scrambling things out, blowing things out, uh, collapsing things down, disrupting what is. It's a much more proactive approach. And there's a whole bunch of tools you can use around this. And I wanna make this clear right now, tools, individual tools, not processes, but tools. If you wanna build processes on the fly, these are the tools you wanna to build them out of. We're looking at tools, not processes. So that's the second point uh, on the Mind Shifters map, five directions. The third point is simulate new or create new. Okay, now this is going into a different space. It's going away from, way, way away from the old trances and starting to proactively build working both with somebody's conscious thinking and their unconscious thinking, working with their generative self, the deep intelligence within them, and their conscious cerebral thinking. I like to work with people in their totality. And we're looking at indulging ourselves in creating powerful new possibilities. Okay? Now, what I want to make clear here is this creating new, I sometimes call it simulating new, because we can't create and impose upon the system ecologically uh, a solution that's necessarily gonna work. This is why it's important to work with the totality of somebody and still work with what I call the generative faculty, present and aware and participating in the process. So we're playing with possibility when we're creating new. We are not installing a new way of being. If we did, we would be being arrogant in the extreme. If we got it right, we'd get extremely lucky. Okay, so we need to work with the broader wisdom of the system when we are creating something new or simulating something new. It's new possibilities. That's what we're playing with there. And we're creating them and exploring them and making them as vivid as possible so that the system, the broader intelligence of the system that is the person that you're working with, can try them on and adjust them uh, as is useful. So it's another point in the conversation. So this is the third point, creating new or simulating new. The fourth direction, and this relates to creating new as well, but it's drawing on resources. Drawing on resources. Because people are inherently resourceful. You know, there's an old uh, presupposition of NLP that says people have all the resources they need uh, in order to do whatever. I don't quite hold with that, personally. I like to put a little twist on it, which is we have all the resourcefulness we need. So we may be missing specific resources. We can build those resources because we have the resourcefulness to do that. So I like to say we have all the resourcefulness we, we need. Uh, and sometimes we have pre-existing resources, or sometimes the person we're working with has an abundance of pre-existing resources that are operating in different trances in different contexts, but are not operating in the trances they want to run in the particular context they're in. So we want to bring them across. This is an important thing, bringing them across. Um, and that's something we'll do. We'll go and draw on resources, we'll source resources from other places. We may be building them into new trances, we may be modifying old trances with these resources. And again, in this direction, drawing on resources, there are tools clustered around that. There are different ways of doing this. The last direction on the map is develop the transcendent. Okay, I mentioned the trans and transcendence model. We're doing two things. We're working with the trances, the individual trances, and we're working with the transcendent self. The totality of who this person is that goes beyond everything else that goes beyond any given specific moment, any given specific trance, what is everything else about who they are beyond all of that? So the transcendent self, you know, a capacity for somebody to, to identify with their transcendent self, okay, and, and this is just the broadest bandwidth trance you can possibly be in, is a powerful thing. 
It creates a very powerful generative space. Um, Milton Erickson used to talk about therapeutic trance. This is a very broad bandwidth trance where people have now an access, a ready access to the totality of who they are. Not in a narrow left brain conscious mind thinking way, but in a broader, more grounded experiential way. So with regard to developing the transcendent self, this is a huge area, by the way, developing the transcendent self. Um, and when we do the, the material around the Freestyle Mind Shifters toolkit, that area will in many ways be the area that, that has the least amount in it relative to, the, to the, the sheer breadth of potential in that area. There are so many ways to work with developing the transcendent self. Um, I just I just hook this in. I'll tie this in for a moment with uh, with an idea from cl a classic hypnosis idea, which is the idea of ego strengthening. In a sense, the ego is the collection of stories you hold about yourself that you use to make sense of yourself in the world. Now, this is a fundamental resource of the transcendent self. The ego is a resource of the transcendent self. Your self-image is a resource of the transcendent self. Or, of course, otherwise, if your self-image and all of these things, your ego, quote unquote, is not uh, supportive of you being fully connected to your full resourcefulness. Okay? So, in classic hypnosis, they talk about ego strengthening. Now, I believe this is doing something similar to what I'm talking about with developing the transcendent self. The more somebody in their transcendent self and the totality of who they are and the image they have of themselves and the totality of who they are, the more they understand themselves to be powerful, to be resourceful, to have choices and options, a myriad of them, to be able to do what they need to do, to be able to create what they want to create. The more they have this understanding of themselves, as somebody dynamic, somebody powerful, you know, and they are, and you are if you're listening to this, okay? You go way beyond all the stories you've told yourself about who you are before now. And I'm not just blowing smoke, I know this to be true because we are not the stories that we hold about ourselves. This is why I say they are a resource to the transcendent self, at least potentially, or they can be a burden if they're not useful. You know, so this is what we're doing when we're developing the transcendent self. We're hooking people into the totality of who they are. You know, what's possible for them that they don't realize. One of the problems that people have is they look at all the toxic trances in their lives and they think that those toxic trances are them and they're not. This is why I call it the transcendent self. It goes beyond the trances. If we mistake our trances for who we are, we get undermined by them on another level beyond how they may undermine us in the moment in terms of what it is that we want to do, create, engage, whatever. They undermine us beyond the moment because we fall for a trap, an illusion. We think that's who we are and it's not. It's something that we do, something that we've created in the past. We can go beyond all of the trances. We exist beyond our trances. We are not our trances. We are the creator or co-creator of those trances. And we have the power to recreate them, recreate ourselves, recreate how we are in the world, how we engage with the world. We all have this capacity deeply. Most people don't know it. Most people are not really hooked into it or connected with it. Now, here's another thing, you see. You could pick any of these points and do powerful work with people. So the other four directions that I mentioned working with the trances, even if you don't work with any specific trances and you work with someone's transcendent self, develop them on that level, whoa, you know, that's where really big powerful shifts can take place. So sometimes it's gonna depend on the individual client. When I'm working with a client, they'll come in with their problem and I'll move quickly away from dealing at all with that problem. Okay, if I can get away with it. Some people, they wanna go there, they wanna do some stuff with the trance. Uh, I'm happy to go in that direction as well. It's gonna depend on the moment, it's gonna depend on the individual. But sometimes I wanna move away from that, okay? 
Because if you develop people at the level of the transcendent, then going back and working with their individual trances, they are much more powerfully resourceful to do it. They are much more powerfully resourceful to do it. And sometimes it's useful to go in and pat and interrupt on the level of trance as a way of showing people that they are transcendent of that trance. They go beyond that trance. That trance is not who they are. You know, you create uh, a shift, even a momentary shift in a trance that they didn't know could be any different. You go, wow, so how did you do that? What does that say about you as a person that you're able to just shift your experience like that? Wow, and I wonder what is everything else about you that goes beyond even this now? You know, so working at the level of trance and transcendence, I know we were doing the trans and transcendence model last week, but this is a really powerful thing because if you're hammering in the same direction all the time, you don't get the same transformative effect as you do as if you move between the trances and the transcendence. Trances, transcendence, it's like yin and yang. It's like the folding of the sword and a, you know, the steel to make a, the blade of a katana, a Japanese sword. You fold that steel, the, the hardness into the softness because you want to get that right balance between the cutting edge and the flexibility in the metal so it doesn't shatter, you know. Um, it's a bit out there, that metaphor, but it, it, it's, it's a yin and yang folding. Okay, it's like a pumping action, expanding, contracting, transcending and into the trances. It's this folding in of opposites that ultimately creates the most powerful generative effect with people, hence the trance and transcendence model being the underpinning of this. Okay, so that is the mind shifters map. And each of those areas, when we look at the uh, Freestyle Mind Shifters Toolkit, each of those areas, each of those directions is a hub for a set of tools. Okay, now I want to just add one last point here. I will only be able to share a finite number of tools through the Freestyle Mind Shifters Toolkit. I won't be able to share all the tools that I use in my work with clients, but I will be sharing some of my favorite ones. And I don't want people to think that it's the be all and end all, but once you switch on and you understand this way of working, you will be able to start gathering additional tools from all sorts of places, from all sorts of different quote unquote therapy styles, coaching approaches, training approaches, hypnosis approaches, you'll be able to be switched on and go, ah, I can see where I can use that tool to do this piece of work in relation to the mind shifters map, in relation to the trance and transcendence model. So the whole thing, um, what I want for this is to be, for it to be a generative framework for you, something that you can use to underpin your development, not just right now as a, as a change worker, as a coach, as a transformative facilitator, not just underpinning your development now, but something that can serve you over the years in becoming um, more richly skilled, more uh, deeply connected to, to profound understandings about humans, about us human beings and how we work, um, and how you can, you, you know, you can continue to develop a skill set around that. Okay, thank you for being with me with this video. If you have any questions, please ask questions. What I might do is before the uh, main program, the main training program, I might do a webinar ahead of time to answer questions based off the back of these uh, videos. So if you have questions, please ask them in a nearby comments section and I will gather them together and we'll, we'll do a webinar on that. Why don't we just say, we'll do that now. Okay, take care of yourself. Keep your eyes and ears open for more news of how this is unfolding going forward.